Hi, I'm Peter Kamstrom of Kamstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you around SharePoint Designer. I'll start the application by, as usual, typing something in here, searching for it, and then I'll find SharePoint Designer. I'll open that, and then the first thing you see is that you need to open a site to work with this. You can also customize your own personal site, what is called my site, your own private site collection. You can create a new blank website or you can add a subsite to my site. Those are the same thing, of course. And uh, then we can create a template and you can get the more templates also once you select which site you want to go into. Let's see, this is the one we want to work with today. So once you open that site, you get to see all the site templates that are available in that site. So that's for creating new SharePoint sites, but usually you, and you open it through this and you have the recent sites here. Uh, it's worth noting that SharePoint Designer really doesn't work with or care about the whole concept of site collections. It only works within one site. So in SharePoint Designer, that's all you work with. You work with one site and its contents, its settings and so on. Of course, this site in turn can communicate with other sites and so on, but you can't really control any of that interaction within SharePoint Designer. So the first thing you get to, of course, is the familiar ribbon on top here. Uh, and then you have something called a summary page. Uh, so each object that you click on has this summary page with the most important information regarding the object that you have selected. So you have the, the information, you have the permissions, you have the subsites that are available in this site, and you have some general settings there regarding the quick launch, the RSS feed, things like that. Then you go into the lists and libraries and get a quick overview of all the lists that you have. And there you also see the description and the number of items that are in each of these lists and libraries. Notice also that SharePoint Designer does not have the concept of apps. In SharePoint Designer, everything is called lists and libraries. And if you have an app installed, what's now called an add-in, that's not shown at all here. So SharePoint Designer really didn't get the memo on apps. So everything is still called lists and libraries in SharePoint Designer. To go into one of the lists and libraries, you get the same kind of summary page that you have for the site. You get everything that's connected to that um, library in this case. Here you have a workflow that's been created for this CV's document library. You can do some modifications here. These are the most common ones. Some things are much easier to do here in SharePoint Designer than they are in the web interface, such as removing the folder content type, for example. Actually, you can do that with the delete button. You see the delete button on the ribbon is disabled there, so you can delete that there with the delete. And you can also hide the new folder command if you want to do that. You also have this allow management of content type, which is a very powerful thing, of course. And this is also something that's not available in the browser. You can hide a document library or a list from the browser. So this is a quick way of getting through the, the most basic settings of a document library in this case, but of course a list also. Here in the workflow section, you have a list of all the workflows that has been created in this site. And you can also see which type of workflow that's is here, the SharePoint 2013 workflow in both those cases. And you also see who created it and when it was created and modified, those kind of things. And if it's a list workflow or a reusable workflow or a site workflow, those are the three types of workflows that exist in SharePoint Designer. And then you have the site pages and that's a document library. And there you see the wiki pages that you can create there. In here, you can create the different types of web part pages and you can also create a blank ASPX or HTML page, something that's not possible to do in the browser, of course. Site assets, there you can go and view that document library. You can see the content types. And usually this is much quicker working with content types in SharePoint Designer than in the web browser. There's a lot of clicking around when you're working with content types. So you might find this easier. You can see the site columns. And here are the external content types. 
external content types are definitions of external data entries. That is how you connect to and what fields those um, data sources have. It's a rather powerful thing, uh, but not that commonly used. Data sources is mostly used if you're on-premise and you can connect it to a range of different data sources. The difference between external data, uh, ex external content types and data sources is where they're stored. External content types are stored globally for the entire organization. Data sources are only stored in this site that we're working on. Master pages is what controls everything in SharePoint, the basic building blocks. Here you can go in and modify those. Site groups, those are the SharePoint permission groups that you have for defined for this site. And then you can see the subsites. I don't have any there. And then you have the all files. You can see a lot of under the hood material in SharePoint. So you can see how it's built up. It's rather interesting. All right, that was a quick overview of SharePoint Designer and how you work with it and how you click around. Two final things that I want to show you. One thing is this one, uh, the refresh button here. Since this is a desktop application, everything you do needs to be saved. Or not everything, but most things actually needs to be saved before they actually get published to the SharePoint site. Yeah, and also vice versa, if you do a change on the SharePoint site, on the, in the web browser, you need to refresh so to get that information down to the desktop. That's an important thing. This is also an important thing, preview and browser. So if you want to go to a library that you're working on or something like that. So let's go into the, the CV's uh, document library here. If I go into that and now click F12 uh, or just preview and browser like that, then you see I go directly to that document library. So it's a, it's a rather powerful feature to navigate between SharePoint Designer and the web browser interface. You can open that in different resolutions, also something that might be less useful in these days. All right, so that's the quick run through again. Thank you for watching this demonstration.